Awesome. Welcome back to another episode of Measuring Dev Skills with Code Signal. What are we talking about today, Pat? Uh, hey, everyone. Welcome back. Today, we're going to be looking at relational databases. Awesome. Welcome back to another episode of Measuring Exciting Dev stuff. Skills with. <laughs> Sorry about uh, that. <laughs> uh, I, was, I was like, it, it's SQL, right? Yeah, it's SQL, exactly. We might as well go ahead and grab the task. I mean, just, I guess, as a refresher or, or for anyone who hasn't seen these before, basically what we're looking at right now is the official code signal pair programming environment. So we've got this nice IDE that we can work together in. Uh, we're going to have the task description appear in a second, and we've got this console down here. So I'll select the task. Uh, it's one of my favorites. It's this one over here, country selection. So we'll just confirm that. And now right away, we've got our description over here. So I'll just move uh, us <laughs> to the side for a minute so we can take a look at this. Um, so basically, the, uh, the idea is that we've got this task where we're given this table of information, right? This has to do um, with uh, individuals, I, I, or sorry, it has to do with, with countries the continent they belong to, the population they have, and we basically want to filter them. We want to only be looking at the countries that are within Africa. That's basically mm -hmm. the idea. Uh, so right off the bat, we can see that like there isn't really much in the console. It's telling us to run the sample tests, and we might as well go ahead and do that to see what it is we're looking at. So if you recall, when we were looking at sort of the UI challenges, the tests were basically um, taking what we had, right? The user interface stuff, it was uh, building it out, and then it was testing things like, are these elements you know, the right distance apart? Are they the right color? These kinds of things. So it was looking at different details of this one thing we had created. Now this one's a little different in the sense that we're gonna write some queries over here for our database, and it's basically gonna load up a bunch of different uh, databases, and then run those queries and see if it gets the expected result from that. So this is a little closer to what we would see in the case of like an al algorithmic challenge in the sense that it's multiple uh, different tests that we're running here. Yeah. Okay. And I guess if, if you've been watching our previous episodes, you would notice that it uh, doesn't matter if we're doing like a database question or a UI or a front-end JavaScript, the, UI, the overall layout of the ID is very standardized, and we've spent a lot of time thinking about like how do we not confuse both test takers as well as the people who review the results. And uh, the overall layout is always there's a description on the left side, there's a coding area at the top right, and there's test cases at the bottom. But just like you were des describing, the the inputs are very, very different, right? In, in this case, we have like database tables being passed in as inputs. And in the case of those front end questions, we have like uh, whole HTML DOMs being passed in and being tested in a uh, Selenium driver. Yeah, so that's a great point. I mean, just speaking from the perspective of a user, that's a really nice uh, thing to be able to just know where to look to find the description, know where mm -hmm. to look to see, you know, what the constraints are, what to expect. Uh, that's definitely something that comes across that time has been put into because, I mean, uh, we don't see this in all these kinds of platforms, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So definitely that's a nice thing. Um, Another thing, uh, this was, I think, mentioned in the last episode, but the idea that we're able to just focus here on our SQL queries. I mean, that's a really mm -hmm. nice thing because just seeing these tables over here rendered, like that's a non-trivial thing, you know? Anyone who has some experience trying to develop a web app or anything supported by a database, just kind of interacting with it, it's a very non-tangible thing. So to have this table just clearly displayed over here, the results that we're getting clearly displayed, that's really nice. It's essentially eliminating the, the noise that we might otherwise experience when having to deal with something like this. So it allows basically the um, the interviewer or whoever you um, you know you're screening or, or interviewing. It allows you to basically just isolate their uh, query building skills, right? Because that's the thing we're trying to measure here, as opposed to anything that might be kind of tangentially related to that. Yep. And just like with the other one, where we said that you know even though we're right now in the interview solution, there is a live pair programming and I was messing with your code, I'm sorry, just now. And <laughs> It's our code, don't worry about it. <laughs> but in the, in the testing solution or the certification solution, you have the same exact ID, same environment, same questions, same automated testing flow without this pair programming or the video call functionality. 
just meant for a slightly different use case where you're trying to do automated assessments instead of pair programming and live interviewing. Yeah, so there's a lot that we can sort of see and assess without even having a person there, right? So we can see already like two out of six sample test pass, right? It's not just like a pass or fail kind of thing. It's giving us some nice information. Uh, and depending on how the tests are structured, it might be something like, oh, well, we can see that they're good at grabbing the uh, the information from the database, but not necessarily, you know, filtering in the right way or ordering in the right way or something like that. Uh, so speaking of which, we should probably actually finish this one up. So what we actually want is the countries uh, where the continent is equal to Africa, right? Uh, and I helped a lot. I almost wrote half of it. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, two out of six, right? That's like a third of the right answers there. So yeah, nice job. Uh, this is and we an easier one, obviously. What was that? I said this is obviously an easier one. I think most of the questions that I've seen are significantly harder than uh, selecting the whole table and then adding filters and ordering. That's right. Yeah, it definitely it, it does go up in difficulty from here. But yeah, we made it. So that's nice. Uh, one thing we can see just real quick is like, let's say we wanted some other um, columns or something like that. Maybe we just want the, the name and the population because, you know, it's kind of implied they're all from the same continent. Uh, one nice thing I just wanted to sort of show off is how we can just immediately see that change right here. So, I mean, that's nice for debugging purposes and things like that. But again, just sort of making it visual. It's a nice little advantage. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, I think we got them all. I think we're passing all the tests here. So anything else we wanted to say about this one? Uh, I think just in general, I think next week we're going to be talking about other types of databases, right? So like what else besides MySQL is possible in uh, in our ID? I believe we can handle uh, PostgreSQL, which is an object-oriented database. And mm -hmm. I believe there's now support for NoSQL, such as uh, MongoDB as well. Yep. And I don't think we do Oracle databases yet, but I do know that it's coming. So uh, that should sort of complete the overall most used databases completion, uh, like the, the bucket overall. So checking all the bases. Checking all the bases. Awesome. So which one exactly are we doing next week? Uh, I don't think we have the task selected yet, but I think it's going to be something related to PostgreSQL. Perfect. Uh, Postgres is similar, I guess, in syntax to what we did here, but it's it has very noticeable differences. So I guess we could talk about that a little bit next time. That sounds good. Looking forward to it. Awesome. It was a quick one this week. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in, and we'll see you next week. Thanks. Bye for now. Bye.